So today we're going to be adding on to the new um, React News site, and we are going to um, learn how to add routes. So we can have pages and, and different routes to those pages. Um, so to start off, I'm starting off with my code from yesterday. So I'm going to go into that directory. I'm going to make sure that I'm in the same directory as the package.json. I'm going to do npm run dev because I don't need to install anything um, since everything's already included in the nodes modules and everything like that. <clears throat> so now if I go back, if I go to my browser, I see what we've done yesterday. We have a nav bar up here. Um, the, the clicks don't really do anything. They just do an alert. And for each of our article teasers, when we click on them, we see some more information around the article. So today, instead of seeing the, uh, instead of expanding this component and, and having more article information here, we want to um, be able to, when we click on this, that would route us to a different page. Let's say slash article slash one for the I, for the first one for the ID. Um, so it would route us to that page and then on that page we would see um, the article information together. Okay. So I'm going to start off at my app.js file. I'm going to go over just a review of what we did yesterday. So we have our news data that we grabbed. We are <clears throat> currently creating an all articles state that is a list of objects. And this list of objects has these attributes. So we have an ID, title, created date, URL, author, and object ID. And these are coming straight from the news data. Um, and on our main app, we have our navbar component that we have created um, in here in our navbar. Uh, sorry, in our components. And then we also have um, a list of all articles. So we loop through all, all of our articles and then we create article teaser components based on all of those um, all of those individual articles. So first step, I would say, let's move this stuff into its own component. So we can create a new component called, article list .jsx. And this article list will basically just contain this. So it will take in a list of all articles and then it'll map through them to, um, to then display an article teaser per article that is in that list. So this will help us later on when we look back to the original page. So we have here new past comments. So there's different views. So if we have, especially for these two, so new and past, um, if we just pass this article list, um, a list of articles, then it will just display them as we want it to. And we don't have to worry about any specific um, details. So we can send in a list of the newest articles to the one on this page. And then the one on this page will get a list of different articles that is from the past, that is based on a certain timestamp. So that's where we, we would um, use this extra component, this article list. So we can abstract just going through a list and then making article teasers out of it. So I'm going to scaffold this out. I'm going to say um, export default function. And I'm going to call this, oh, sorry, my Zoom controls, um, article list. And then here we're going to return. That is not how you do a return. This, okay. And then I'm just going to return. Um, I don't have to put a div actually. There's 
this that I did not really know was a thing before. Um, so you can just use a, a generic code block and um, you don't have to put it in a div if you don't want to. So I'm going to take that code and then I'm going to paste it in here. We're going to have to do a little bit of um, a little bit of changes. So I have to put this in curly braces because I forgot to grab them from the other component. Um, just fixing this. Okay, this can be done probably better, but this is fine. Um, okay. I'm actually going to keep this as a div. And then I'm going to give it um, here. I'm going to give it a class name, um, article list. <clears throat> awesome. So what are we missing here? So we have a reference to something called all articles, but we don't really have it in here. We, we're missing a few things actually. Um, so what's the first thing that we're missing? Article teaser. Article teaser, importing it, yeah. So I'm gonna do that real quick. So I'm gonna import article teaser. So now this won't give us an error. Um, what's the second thing that I need to do? And we need to send in our props. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So the article list is going to need a, a list of articles to, to actually be able to, um, to use it inside of it. So I'm going to say here that I'm going to expect something called all articles. Um, maybe I should just call it articles to make it generic, since this is a, a generic component. Um, I'm going to take in articles and then I'm going to map through the articles. Okay. Um, articles mapping through everything seems good. Am I missing anything here? Don't think so. Okay. So now we'll go back to our app and we'll actually try to call this um, articles list. So article article list component, I need to import it. Um, so at the top, oh, it automatically imported. Um, but if it didn't, then you should import it. Um, I'm not gonna be using the article teaser anymore. So I'm gonna just delete that to keep our imports clean. <clears throat> and our article list is expecting something that is called articles. So I'm going to add that here. I'm going to add this prop. Articles equals all articles. And that was autocorrect. So this needs to be in curly braces. There we go. So now we're sending in the list of all articles into our article list. Um, I'm going to save, and once it renders this article list, it'll go in here, <clears throat> and it will map through and create the article teasers. So visually, we should see the exact same thing when we go to our site. And let me refresh. Awesome. Nothing changed, which is good. That's This is exactly what we're looking for. Um, Uh, were there any questions or? Can I see the um, app again? Mm -hmm. So our app now is pretty simple. It's just um, this piece of state and then our two components in here. Are you good? Or do you need more time with this? Oh, no, I'm good. Thank you. OK, awesome. Um, the article list page, this one here. Uh, 
Are you good, Brian? Something. Okay. Um, so let's look at the article teaser real quick because right now we have the um, the functionality where if we click on it, we will see extra stuff pop up. So we don't want that to happen right now. Um, so we need to refactor our code. So it's taking in an, uh, an article. We have a show article state that we created yesterday. So it can do the rendering, the conditional rendering. So I would say that I we don't really need this anymore. Um, we're not going to use show state. We're not going to need this render if show article. Um, update show article. Also don't need that because we're not going to be showing anything conditionally in here. So I'm actually going to delete all of this right now. It's it's somewhere in, not somewhere, it's in the demos from yesterday. So um, I can just delete that. I'm going to clean up my code here, remove everything that is commented out. Okay, so now we have a div with an on click, which calls a function um, or calls the set art, set show article. So it's basically dealing with the state. Um, for now, let's remove this on click. Okay. And that should be okay. So now the when we click on the div, nothing will happen at all. Um, we have our regular stuff here and I'm gonna remove this. Okay, so now our clicking won't work, but we'll still have uh, a list. Okay, that works. Um, so let's see, article teaser. Okay, so everything works now. Um, now let's talk about the React router. So React router, is um, an open source library that is used to control routing in, in a single page application. So this library can load up a component for you based on a, a, a route that is visited. And we'll see how, how we do that in, in a sec. Um, there is, let me just show a link to the docs real quick. Okay. So today we're going to be using hash router. So we have a hash router and we have browser router. And these are the main two that are used. Um, they recently have, an, they recently came out with a new update, which is create browser router, create hash router. So these are the new recommended ones. Um, we won't be covering those today, but just so you're aware that they exist. Um, cause I didn't have time to, um, like go through them and make sure that the examples work. Um, but this is, yeah, this is very new that they just came out with. Um, but yeah, so browser router and hash router. So in the docs, browser router is the recommended one, um, versus hash router, but we will be using hash router today and we'll discuss exactly the reason why. Um, so before we talk about that, let's install, let's do the install first. Let's install this library. I'm gonna copy this into the chat real quick so you guys can have it too. Um, so I'm gonna stop my server and I'm gonna do npm install react router dom. You don't really need this dash dash save honestly. Um, so I'm just going to remove that. It's the, it's the default behavior to do a save. So you don't have to do it manually. Um, okay. So now I've installed the, the React router done. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, we have to do React router DOM because there's React router, I think native, um, which is for mobile and there's just a few different versions. Um, okay. I'm going to restart my my server. All right. So 
normally when we go to a URL, right? Whenever our URL changes in the browser, um, our browser sends a get request to that URL. Um, and that will end up going to the server. So by default, if like, let's say I'm looking at, um, let me see a better example of this tutorial. Okay, so when you see a hash here in, in, a, in, a, in a URL, that everything after that hash is not going to be sent to the server. So here, some uh, so some websites use that to link to certain components in your browser. So in this page, adding a route, this is a specific link. And when I clicked it, it added this hash next to it. So this allows for um, like view changes and stuff like that in, in your same page but it this request does not get sent to the server. Um, so let me show you in here. So this is a default browser thing where anything after the hash can denote an element. So this element adding a router probably has an ID Sorry. okay so the ID is adding a router and then the hash is adding a router so if I had just clicked uh, like wrote whatever this ID was so here there's another ID the root route so if I say the root route, it will automatically move me to this part of the page. So this is different than what hash router is, but it uses the same principles. So for hash router, we will, instead of adding like slash um, article slash whatever, we're going to put a hash first or well, Jane, uh, sorry, React will automatically put that there. Um, and what this will do is we can do client side uh, rendering, client side routing, I mean, um, and all of these will not go to the server. I actually believe it's slash like this. Um, we'll, we'll see an example of it in a sec. Um, so the benefits of this is, let's say I have on my Django side, I have my website domain slash article, and that will bring me um, data that will re re return data. Um, so React Router, what it does is it intercepts these things when you're calling them from the browser. So your front end, so we have, sorry, we have our two parts. We have React, we have Django. This is when we're doing our full stack application. So on the React side, if you're using browser router, browser router can allow you to just have the slashes. And what it does is when I click on something and it routes me to somewhere else, it automatically intercepts and it only renders things from within React and it doesn't actually send anything to the server. So it intercepts this request and um, it only does client-side rendering and that request up here does not get sent to the server. So the only issue that might come up is, let's say I just copied this link and I put it into the browser, right? Chances are this request is going to go straight to the server instead of going through my React site. And that will cause it to give me instead of a, this page, it will give me um, it will give me the data that was supposed to be sent in from um, from my API from my Django API. So that is one downside to browser router. Um, 
And that is why if you use hash router, you won't have to deal with those accidental mishaps of using um, the full stack application with the same domain. So a lot of times you're using, you have your backend API using a slightly different domain. So you don't have to worry about that at all. Um, but for our purposes now, we're gonna use hash router. Um, it is more recommended to use browser router because people say like it's it's not pretty to have the, the hash in the URL to be more consistent and stuff like that. Um, but I haven't been able to find like fundamental differences. They both basically do the same thing. Um, any questions on that? Any any thoughts or discussion? Uh, why why does it matter that we use that? Like, why do we only want client side rendering? Because if you have so if you have the client side rendering is for your page because you want your your links to work when you're going through your page if i click on past i want it to go to let's say slash past and give me the correct information um so if i'm using browser router or hash router this will work but if i had just like i said typed this this url with the slash it didn't go through my ui my ui like, let's say I had this, whenever I click on this, um, on this title, it would take me to slash articles slash one. And I would get the correct behavior. So this, if I clicked on it, it would reroute me to here and it would show me the page that has that information. But if I had on my back end, um, I had the same route defined for the API in Django, then if I had just copied this, this, um, this URL and I put it into a different, so I want it to go to article slash one, it might not, it probably won't take you to the actual UI. It won't take you to the page that you're viewing the article. It'll actually probably just return some JSON that our API was um, gonna send back. So this will happen if we're using the same routes. So if you are careful and you don't have the same URLs for your back end and your front end, um, then there won't be mix up. But yeah. Um, so it's basically probably. any mix up. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's allowing us to be slightly lazy. Say it again. It's allowing us to be slightly lazy. A little bit, not slightly lazy. It's allowing us to develop without running into weird issues and having to retroactively go back. Um, but I think it is also a matter of preference. Um, the whoever, like, I don't know. We we've had multiple instructors in the past, so this this lesson has gone both ways, and this is how um, it is now. Um, but yeah, so when you're working, you might see either of them. Um, so it'll end up being what your employer wants to use in a way. Um, and what makes more sense to for the for the environment. So if I wasn't if I didn't have um, my Django project going to the same URL and um, as my as my React one, I won't have to worry about that. I can just use browser router. It's not a big deal. Does that make sense? Any other questions? Okay, let's see how the code works. Um, let's actually create some routes. So I'm gonna go to app.js. Um, I'm going to import. So here I'm going to import this line. I'm actually going to copy it over um, into the chat for you guys as well. So import, I'm going to import hash route first. Um, 
and I'm gonna give it an alias router just so I don't have to type hash router out again. Um, and then I'm gonna import routes and I'm also going to import route, singular and plural. And these are all coming from um, React Router DOM. React Router DOM, there it is. Okay. So all we have to do is inside of our app, I actually think there might be two steps, but okay. Um, so inside of our app, our app nav, we don't want that to be in the router because we want that to stay consistent on every single page that we route to. So we can put our router right below the app nav. So in here, I'm going to create a router component. And then inside this router component, I'm gonna add the routes component. And within that, each route will be defined here. So I'm gonna define a route, a one route component. Um, and this route component will have the path, path equals, oops, path equals slash. Okay. And then element, element is going to be um, whatever element we want to display. So I am going to put this in curly braces, and then this is going to be a component, a, just a, a regular React component. And this component I'm going to call homepage. We haven't created this yet, but we are going to in a sec. So all we've done is put the router inside of our app wherever we wanted it to. I put it right below my app nav. I added the routes component. And inside of that, I added a singular route that has a path of slash. And the element that will render is the home page. So right now I'm gonna comment my articles list out. Um, and I'm going to create a folder inside my source folder called pages, just to keep it organized. And I'm gonna create my homepage, .jsx. My homepage is just gonna be like any other component. So I'm gonna export default function. I'm gonna call this function home page. And in my home page, what should I return? I'm just gonna return, um, this is the home page. Okay, I think this is all. Um, I'm gonna copy this information actually, and I'm gonna create a second page because we're gonna need to create a second page. Um, so might as well do it now. So the second page that I'm creating is gonna be called article page. JSX. So we have article, but this one is gonna be article page. Um, we might use the article, like we might just copy the information here and put it in the article page. Um, or just use the article component itself. But no, these ones are two different pages than what we had previously, Eric. Um, okay, so I copied my, my function definition into article page. I'm going to say this is article page and this is article page. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back, if I go back to my browser, if I go to my homepage, I do not see anything. 
So homepage is not defined because I forgot to import it. So if I go back to my app.js, um, up here, I'm going to import homepage and I might as well also import my article page. Easy enough. Yeah. Can you explain line eight again? Uh, the alias, which one is the alias for Ashraf and Router? All of them um, three or just one? No, this one. So within, between the, the, the commas, so this is one import. This is the second, this is the third. Um, so hash router we're importing as router. So router is the alias for hash router. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you wanted to do an alias for routes, would you just do an as and then something else after yeah. it? As okay. some, and then we can use it, use something. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. All right. So we imported our pages. I'm, down here oh sorry was someone uh, i was just going to see like could you switch the article page really quick yep so it's just the home it's just the home page it's just but, the home page with with just this saying this is the article page for now i didn't change anything yeah okay so now if we go to our home path, we should be able to see our home page. And it says this is the home page. So if we look at the elements, we have our nav. Um, let's see. Not sure why. Oh, I think it needs to. Okay, I need to scroll. <laughs> um, Okay, let's close this. Okay, so we have our app nav and we have our hash router. So our hash router is gonna be the the second half of our screen. So everything below below um, this nav bar. If I wanted to add, let's say, a head a footer to my website, I would also add it in the app here. I would add it below my my hash router. Um, so this is kind of generally how you would see um, your app.js structured. So you would have um, whatever basic components that your website will carry on throughout um, different pages. So here I have the router um, as, as this big component. If I wanted, let's say a side panel, I wanted another side panel here. I would have to add those in the app as well around the hash router wherever uh, and keep the hash router just the content that I want to change. And this is the cool thing with, about React. It's if you change the route, it's only going to change whatever's inside of this hash router or just the router, whichever one you use. Um, OK, so our home page, we wanted to display our article list. So let's copy this from our app.js and then put it inside of our homepage. Instead of this is the homepage, I am going to put that there, uncomment it. So now it's going to be an article list with all the articles. Um, one issue is I have not yet imported my all articles. So I would need to pull that in. I'm gonna call it articles here. I'm gonna change the name to articles and I need to pull in articles as prop and then I need to send it in here. So this I'm back to my app.js articles equals all articles. So that is again the name of the state. So now if I go back, I refresh um something is wrong article list is not defined i did not import it so import article list and now if i go back i see my um my list again awesome so 
So if I refresh, no errors. Awesome. Oh, Eric, I just read your question again. Um, so you're asking why the pages aren't in components. It's just to, um, it's just for organization purpose. Like your your components can go into pages, um, versus your pages are going to be connected to your router. Um, you can also connect like just other components. It's just a conceptual organization thing. Um, you can you can organize it in a different way if you'd like. Awesome. Okay, so let's add another route to um, to go to the article page. I'm going to create a route again with path equal to, let's say this one is slash articles slash. Um, we want the article ID here, so we want a number. Um, so in Django, we would. It, it, this is very similar to how Django um, denotes variables. So here we're going to put colon, and then we're going to say article ID. So this is going to be the name that we're going to be um, accessing this from. The, I mean, this, the, the, the variable with. And then element equals, which element am I using here? article page. Okay. Um, my article page probably needs um, articles. So we can get to that, to that actually later. Um, I forgot to close this route element. Okay. So now if we go to our article page, um, this is what we're displaying right now. This is fine. Um, let's just check if the actual route works. So if I go to slash article singular, yeah. I'm just gonna do singular article. Article slash two, nothing happens the we don't have a valid route that goes here and put hash now it goes to the article page so when we are doing links the link is automatically going to add um actually it might not automatically add the the hash we'll get to that in a sec i think it might because we're using that specific router um yeah, we'll get to it in a sec. Um, but yeah, so now we did hash article slash two, and this is what we were able to see. So our page is working. If I actually change this from hash router to browser router, um, browser router, I save. I mean, that, so this one won't work, but if I remove the hash, now this works. So going in between the two, it's just as simple as changing what type it is. Um, and you just have to know, you have to decide which one you're gonna use and then have your links be based on that. So if you're, um, if you're using the hash one, just make sure that there's a hash at the beginning. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the hash router for now. Okay. Awesome. So one thing that, um, one moment. Okay, so let's let's look at that article page because right now we're not really giving any good information. Um, so this component should render the information from the article and um, we need to send in the relative information. Um, so the nice thing about the router is it gives us access to the parameters from the route. So to access them, we're gonna import something called use params from React Router DOM. 
So this use params function is going to allow us to access this article ID over here. So if we do here, so inside of our article page, we're gonna say, let, um, I'm gonna call it article ID. So the same name is what I gave it. Let article ID equals use params with, um, with parentheses. So we're, at, we're calling the function and it returns, um, it returns whatever attributes it has. So I'm gonna grab the article list named one. Um, this is article, and then I'm gonna use the article ID, article ID page. So just to see that we're actually grabbing whatever parameter is getting sent here. So if I do this, I need to remember to put the hashes again. Awesome. So if I, I got, this is article two page, I change this to five, it's being updated. So again, all we changed in our article page is we added this use params function. So we imported it from React Router DOM and it gave us access to the URL parameter that we defined over in the router here. So article ID, article ID is over here and we were able to just print it out. Um, questions. Is use params just pointing to the article ID solely or the entire URL? Um, use params is the entire URL, but it only grabs the parameters from that URL. So if I had put another one here, um, let's say something. And Here I could have access to that something. So I grab something and then something. Okay. Um, and then if I go back here, I just have to add another slash. So five slash um, this. So it just takes whatever parameters are in that list. Um, you just, the only thing is you have to, you have to, call it by that name, um, but yeah. Did that answer your question? Okay. Um, hey, did you have a question? Oh, yeah. Um, so I, I'm not sure if I missed it, but where, where did we get the article ID from? It, it's not loading on my... The article ID? So the article ID is coming from the, the, the URL here. So we have to write the URL like this. Mm -hmm. So with a hash and then slash article slash the article ID, which is a number. Um, I just added another parameter after this. So that's why I'm able to type this and um, whatever I wanna type, just getting printed out here. Okay. And can I uh, can I see the app.js again mm -hmm. for the uh, route? Yeah, I'm just going to remove this last one that I added. Um, Gabo, was your was your error fixed? I saw it in the chat. Yeah, awesome. Losing <laughs> up. Yes. I'm trying to understand the use parameter again. Okay. Uh, how you declare the the variable on a, a article page, I believe. Here. Yes. So I mean, you have to know what is article ID for you to write it like that. Yes. So if I didn't want to, I can just call this params. Um, I mean, I would have to say params.articleID. So the name is going to be the same name that you define over here. So it's similar to Django, how um, in our urls.py, we write our URL and we put our parameters that we want. So the ones in the square, in the angle brackets, 
right? So this is this is pretty much the same thing. Um, you define what parameter you want, and then you use that same name to access it from wherever you are going to be using this. So you can grab the entire object. So this returns an object with a bunch of um, attributes, and each attribute is a single single parameter. So params is just putting them into an object. If you do this and you put article ID inside, we are just grabbing the article ID from the parameters that were here. And we can just you use it. That if we call the use parameter on line five, which can we see what is inside? Or we so, won't be able to see anything. Yeah, so console, yeah, let's do that. Let's console log use params. And let me, what happened? Something's not defined. I was trying to print this out. Okay, that's just my test. So it's just an object with one item inside of it called article ID with a value of five. So it, ta it takes pretty much all the parameters that are inside of the URL that led to this page. And the reason why we have access to the, the parameters is because this article page was the element on this path, on this route. So we're tying this article page element to this path. And we have a parameter in there. So whenever we use the use params in here, we can access the parameters that were inserted into the URL um to get to this this page so if i had a parameter up here i would able to, i would be able to use use params on the home page to get whatever parameters i had set here so um some param here if i went to my home page and i did the same thing so i can import use params from react router dom and if i said I'm gonna just do the same console log. So console log, um, use params. So if I do that and I go back here, I'm gonna go back to the home page. To the home page, uh, no routes matched. Oops. Okay, let me clear this and let's see. Oh, because I've added something after that, my bad. <laughs> um, so my some param variable was given the whatever string that I had just put into the, the URL. So basically, anything after the colon will capture um, will capture whatever was typed into the URL and put it into a variable that is called the name, whatever you named this. So some param is going to be the key, and then the value is going to be what was put into the URL in that, in that space. Did that clear it up? Yes, but I have the following up question. Uh, on mm -hmm. the, the use bind function, right? Let's say that we have, uh, Two parameter in our URL. How does it know which one to assign to um, to the variable? Based on here, so this sum param will be passed into the home page. Yeah, no, I'm I'm saying uh, let's say that uh, we have two variable. Uh, let's say after article dot id oh, we okay. have something. Yeah, something. So. It'll so you just know it by name. So this name is binding mm -hmm. to that. So if I have it here, uh, I'm gonna test this out. So if I do, I think it was article slash five slash this is some text. So if I look at the the parameters inside of um, so these are inside of my article page because that's, so here 
I set the article page. This is the route. Um, so we have article ID and then something. So here we have two, two things in this object. We have article ID and then we have something. So the way you can access it is through the name. So you have to be expecting it um, on the other side. Similar to our views in Django where inside the function definition. So when we were writing like define maybe index request, and then let's say article ID. So article ID would have the same name and then the second parameter would be called something. So we're grabbing those two in that function that's defined for that route. So similar here, these are going to be sent into article page. So we can just use those. We can use article ID. We can use something over here if we wanted to. Um, uh, we are not grabbing it. So you'd have to say something and then we can print it out here. And then if I go back here, so it printed, this is some text over here. Did that clear it up? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Um, any other questions? No. All right, I'm gonna clean this up. The, just remove the stuff that I just added. I'm gonna remove this console log um, and remove these extra parameters. Okay, I think we're due for a break here. Let me pause for a minute. Actually, when did we start? 920, right? Yeah. Okay.